Welcome back to our home renovation edition remodel thing. We're continuing along on the cabinetry journey. Today, a little bit of a, uh, of a different adventure. We're gonna be diving into the, uh, the pantry. So the pantry gets this sort of L setup with a, uh, a cabinet that goes in here into this little infill area and a little countertop cabinet that goes there. And we're gonna be contrasting that a little bit because on the cabinetry you see me make, I do the face frame first and then all the boxes and everything are done a little more manually with like normal normal shop stuff. But uh, today we're gonna be cutting boxes first on a CNC. <laughs> so when uh, Donovan was here, we thought it'd be a fun way to like contrast the different cabinetry making uh, methods to bring his portable CNC out and uh, make a video doing just the pantry, the, uh, the more modern CNC way. In the, uh, the time since, he's had that CNC for a year and a half, and most recently he has uh, taken a new job doing sales and support for Yeti, the makers of the portable uh, the smart bench CNC, which he has. So today he's going to give us an actual like solid demo of the machine and what it can do. And of course, no machine like that can do much of anything without the software behind it. So he's going to give us a look at the, the software and that experience as well. Oh look, he's here. Hi. Welcome back. Everyone missed you. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so let's cover the machine first and just kind of, I don't know, familiarize folks with this, this unit here. This unit here. So this is a Yeti smart bench. Um, I actually purchased this about a year and a half ago. Um, with plans incorporating it into my work, doing cabinets for clients and stuff like that, and doing some other stuff. And actually just kind of really fell in love with the machine and the company. And not so long ago, um, Yeti and I have come to an agreement that I'm going to actually start doing some <laughs> work for them. Because you like it so much. So what makes this kind of more unique than, like a lot of people have seen CNC's, they're like these big giant, ones that can do full sheets. Right. They're big footprint. They're not particularly portable. Right. So this one is, I mean, you've got your, your hobbyist ones that, you know, the two by four, the four by four. And even with those, they're like, you put them in your shop, you're done. That takes up that footprint. Um, I brought this in this morning. Uh, this whole thing weighs 180, I believe 186 pounds. It breaks down, goes into the back of my truck. I haul it to the job site. It, um, if you are set up, you can assemble this into a working condition in about three minutes. I can't do that, but it's... It was quick. I mean, it took you longer to carry the stuff out of the truck than right, actually... Right, get everything in here and figure it out. Get it set up. Uh, it's got some really cool features where, um, like, we're building the files on the laptop. Um, I'm connected by Wi-Fi into this currently. And I so I'll, once we get our files, I'll set all my G-code directly over to that. And then I'll run it off the console and we'll look at that. A um, couple other things that Yeti has come out with um, fairly recently, and nobody else is doing it, is if you are familiar with CNCs, um, usually the software is your challenge. Sure. And in that is your feeds and speeds. You know, how fast is the machine traveling across the bed? How fast is the spindle turning to get? You don't want to burn. You don't want to have sawdust. You want to have you know big fluffy beautiful little curls coming up off your your wood that you're cutting and getting that dialed in can be challenging without overloading the machine and this has new technology built into it within software and hardware um, called yeti pilot and it does monitoring uh, spindle loads uh, 50 times a second and it will adjust three times a second in the speed so if i say i want to run at 100% and it's the machine is bogged down, it's too heavy, it'll drop all the way down to 10%. Or like when I'm cut, I can do some slab, I do slab flattening with this. Um, that first pass, you're doing a full full depth or full width, but the second one won't maybe an overlay, so you're only doing half of that. Now I can go from 100% up to 200% on slab flattening. It's like if I hit a knot or hit a something like that, it will like, oh, I'm, that's too much. It'll bring it back down. And then once it's past that, it'll bring it back up. Okay. And you, you can't do that. You can do the adjustment on the, on 
on the fly on this, but you can't keep, there's no way to keep up with that and know what your loads are. So, um, so that's kind of the, the machine itself. They've been around uh, for a little while. They're made in the UK. Um, I'm working with Eric down at Yeti Southeast down in Birmingham, Alabama, and that's where uh, we drop ship all of these out of uh, and ship them all over the country. So what's the biggest advantage of this versus going to like a full size CNC for folks? Patient. So we've got, when we're talking to like, there's a lot of sign companies using these and like a one, two person possible cabinet shop that is still cutting stuff by hand. Sure. Um, this can bring it in there. Or if you're on a bigger production shop where you might have, you know, five by 10 or multiple CNCs, but you're running a production line. It's like you're scheduling that stuff to come through and you need a part. So we had one company out of California that were looking at one of these at a recent show. He said they're out, their, shop, their jobs are two to three hours from the shop and they need oh, wow. a single part. Right. They can throw this on the job site with a, on a job site trailer. And if they need to have that part, they can take the software. We're using Mosaic for these cabinets. And they can cut that part out or that cabinet or didn't fit or something. And they're not trying to get that cabinet, one single cabinet back into a production line. Which I think that actually speaks to like even what we're doing here today, where like you have some like one, like one or two cabinets at a custom job that they got to be in a specific space. Right. Yeah, going back and forth. I went to the job site, I measured everything, and then I drew it at home, and then maybe I checked it again, and then I cut it. Yep. And then you can do that all on site at once. Right. And that's, I mean, yeah, we're, we're here and, and we did some double checking measurements because I had done this a while back, and now we're like really dialing it in, and these are not. Kind of regular cabinets i mean there there's each one because of the way we're putting together for you yes for me there's <laughs> a little Mr. more detail it's a little more detailed in how we're approaching things sure um and we're able to do that um with the, with the mosaic well, software like, like other things too like if like corbels or something like that that'd be yep, a good we example. did I, I recently was down in iowa and we needed to do uh corbels um, so there are brackets that go up on a house and we had a pair of these machines running for a couple of days. We had 48 of them and each corbel takes four pieces <laughs> and the outsides are the same. The insides are the same, but we have these things running for two days because we need 200 pieces mm -hmm. that are 12 by 12. Right. And they're inch and eight thick. So it's a lot of, we went through a lot of material <laughs> and trying to do that by hand would have been nearly impossible yeah we spent almost as much time on the design end of it as we did on the running of it i, I believe that because it's just getting it to kind of tweak and matching so it looks like it was it's all, once it's done it's always been there mm -hmm. and not something that just came off a generic shelf someplace sure um so yeah okay well anything else you want to add before we get into design um yeah, I think that's kind of it. Okay. I mean, that kind of covers basically the machine. And we'll kind of look through some of the, the, the pantry. We're going to work on your pantry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, see what we can come up with. And it's only got three cabinets in it. But if we go into 3D, and I've got some walls pulled down in here. Uh, we've got, this will be an open cabinet with adjust three adjustable shelves in here. This will be... Uh, another open cabinet with a single shelf in here. This one is going to have um, a pair of sliding uh, bypass doors, which we had to do a little bit of work to to get that to work. Some of the things we figured out today is this wall has about a half an inch bow right about in here. So the wall that Matt and I built is perfectly straight. Of course it is. This is this is actually part of the old house. Yeah. So we're trying to butt into that, and because of the way the finishing and stuff. Um, a lot of this will get as much pre-finished as possible before it goes into the into the space. So that's kind of the the three cabinets we're going to do. And once I've got this dialed in um, in the program, the software automatically pushes it out to an optimizer. And if I zoom out here, those three cabinets are going to take uh, three sheets. So this is an end panel, two end panels on the top and bottom for our lower cabinet. This is some of our dividers. This is the end panels here for 
the, um, the lower cabinet uh, with the bypass doors. This is the, I believe, this is an end panel for our upper. Um, this is another, these are all three are for that. And then we've got some tops and bottoms and another, we've got an extra piece that we made um, because of the way this is a blind corner cabinet. This is just an extra one we're gonna use mm -hmm. to, uh, so we can support that long shelf here and we just generate G code. So we're gonna do two tool paths. We're going to do, or two tools. We'll have four tool paths. The first one we'll do is we're gonna do the whole pin drilling. Then we go through and we'll cut all of our dados. So those will all get cut. And then after that, the actually the part will get cut out. And then these, it's probably pretty hard to see, but there's little red tabs here. Um, it'll come back and cut these out afterwards. So um, the tabs are to hold the part in place while it's cutting out. And all it let use is this little one inch tab. Um, I forget the height on it, probably an eighth of an inch tall. It just holds the part. And we just come back and trim those. And then all the parts are loose. We don't have to cut them out. Nice. And then it's these cab, these parts should be ready, ready for assembly. And then I just generate the cheat code. I don't have hold downs. We're going to just screw this one and that's ready to go. That's it, huh? And I transfer it over to the machine. It's been hit go. Okay. On a lot of machines, you need to have the the top of this like surfaced. Yep. We don't care. All we care is about the bottom. So this can be. We don't care. So we don't have to. We don't have to mill this down. Right. The machine comes in a number of pieces. So we've got our, our legs. We've got our main bed, and then we've got a lower beam down here and an upper beam, and these. go up and down. So we'll pull these up. And what it does is I've got rollers underneath here and I've got rollers both upper and lower beam. So it actually sandwiches whatever we're cutting in between that. So this has a laser on it and I can change the increments from 10 millimeter to 1, 0.1, 0 0.01. And then I can just hold it down. I want to go down to one millimeter. Oh, and this giant like jogs over by a millimeter at a time. Yep. And then the laser's out here, but this the spindle is back here. Yep. So I just knows now. Now it knows where it's at. Mm -hmm. So that is directly above that corner. So we've set that. And go back to mm -hmm. And then we'll bring our spindle down. And I get it close. And I just hit my touch pad. And I hit Z0. It's going to go down to a fine. It, just, it very slowly goes down. That's it? Done. Oh, okay. Now it's ready to cut. Okay. Although we got hooked up dust collection. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I would appreciate that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's down here. Yep. That's what keeps it out of the... It's out of the way. It's out of the way. You just got to make sure that this has got enough holes on it. Yeah. You travel back and forth. And that your cord travels back and forth.
Santo. Okay, we have all of our cabinet parts cut out now and we are moving on to some of the other little detail accessory pieces of these cabinets. First up are the doors for this lower cabinet. These are going to be bypass doors and they have this V groove paneling detail on here. So Donovan's laid out the V paneling in the computer to kind of like divide up the space evenly so that uh, the spacing ends up nice and we're going to cut that out of this uh, Piece of uh, medite, medite, uh, medite. However more, you want to call it. Like, weighs like granite. <laughs> it's it's a uh, water resistant MDF. Yeah. That is uh, incredibly dense and heavy. Hundred bucks, hundred pounds a sheet. Yep. It's it's quite dense. So that is a uh, nine degree V bit that's going in now, and that is create the illusion of this being V-groove paneling. Yeah, the next sheet is going to be the back panel for the, uh, the open cabinets. So that's going to be back in here for this open upper and the open lower. So this will be a continuous panel and we'll just cut it to fit both cabinets. Okay, there is our back panels. So we're going to chop this into two to make it more easy to manage but otherwise done done you just like it ran into you i wasn't fast enough for you <laughs> you're faster than me uh-huh <laughs> we're just going to assemble one of these real quick to uh show that it actually works it does. It actually works. <laughs> we know what we're doing. I don't know. It just, he does. Somebody, okay, neither one of us know what we're doing.
So we've got this lower cabinet, uh, we've got it assembled, we've got it, cut it out on the Yeti, and so a couple things on this cabinet that's a little bit different is this is gonna have a double bypass door with the, um, the V-Groove um, MDF that we've got. Those will be a bypass, so they'll have the grooves in there. So that's why this is set back, and then it gets built out, so we need a couple inches of clearance. There'll be uh, a veneer put on here to cover up this and our face frame. We've got adjustable shelves, and then we got to. They'll be applied back on this also. So, um, so we got three cabinets we did for Matt, and uh, the rest he does slightly differently. My own special way. His own special way, and we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> yes. Just leave it there. We'll just leave it there. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to do cabinets. Um, I bought the Yeti about 18 months ago. Um, I'm doing sales for Yeti now, and um, I've been really happy with the machine. It, uh, it's got a good, there's a lot of places that it uh, works out really well. Um, there'll be links in the description, or information in the description if you want more information about the machine. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. So that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, I'll be continuing this little pantry project through to completion. So uh, face frames and paint and all that, and we'll get these installed into a very oddly shaped space. With curves. With curved walls. <laughs> Unintentionally. We, did, we walls. didn't frame them. We didn't frame the curved walls. <laughs> uh -huh. So well, I'll be dealing with that. That'll be uh, an interesting adventure, and I'll bring my scribe block back out that everybody loves with my knife. Yep. <laughs> So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the home renovation, Donovan's CNC or whatever you might have a question about, please feel free to leave us a comment in the description, not in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy working.